Yesterday, Joe Biden gave a speech where he argued that President Trump incites violence instead of stopping it. And instead of proving Biden wrong, Trump proved him right just a few hours later. Yes, we have seen peaceful protests across the country. Yes, we have seen violence erupt in some cities. And yes, we have seen the president try to paint all of it with the same brush. Why? Because it plays right into his hands. He knows that. That's why he tries to capitalize on it and why he tries to encourage it. Here he is describing Portland, Oregon. Or a city like Portland, where the, the entire city is ablaze all the time. No matter how many times the president watches Fox News loop video of a fire in Portland, this is nonsense. The local fire chief told CNN fact checker Daniel Dale that the city is not ablaze. And for the isolated pockets of fires that broke out during demonstrations, they're only, they've only needed one fire engine for them. Portland's been burning for many years. For decades, it's been burning. And I think the people of Portland, and they're tired of it. They're tired of having, uh, of living with this curse. Again, nonsense, but nonsense that is easy to peddle to a host who endlessly airs video from June of fires in Minneapolis or police standoffs in Seattle from July and tries to pass them off as if they happened in late August. If you watch her show, you would think Portland has been burning for years, but it hasn't been burning for years, let alone decades, as the president claims. Now listen to this as Trump also spins lies about his record on crime. Since the beginning of Operation Legend, we have conducted more than 1,000 arrests and reduced the murder rate in Kansas City, which is one of the cities we targeted, by one-third, headed down 33 percent. That's completely made up. Murders have not declined 33 percent there, according to data obtained by the Kansas City Star. The city has recorded 135 homicides this year, putting it on track to be the deadliest year on record. There have been 32 homicides since the operation was announced in July. But as the president paints this picture of an out-of-control America, he acts like he's not already the president of it. I'll appoint more tough-on-crime prosecutors support stiffer penalties and longer jail terms for riders, and support effective policing methods that are proven to be great crime reducers. When you enforce the law, order follows, and we need order. We need, we need order. While I am president, we will defend the rights of law-abiding citizens. We will honor the heroes who keep America safe. He is the president right now, and he has been for almost three years. The crime that he's deriding is happening on his watch. He's stoking it and using it successfully in many cases to make Americans afraid. The violence is fueled by dangerous rhetoric from far-left politicians that demonize our nation and demonize our police. When the rioters come for your town, and they're coming, Will Biden and his team do enough to stop them? These are thugs out there attacking law-abiding citizens. Since these are people are now crossing state lines, clearly, and this is being organized using the Internet, they will burn down your cities and tell you that you did it. And if you don't accept that judgment, maybe they'll send BLM to your house. That is a host saying that you should be afraid because black people might be coming to your house to commit violence. It's blatant racism. It's meant to scare moderate Americans into voting for President Trump. There's a standardized political reaction to violence, and it is to condemn it. And that's the route that Joe Biden took yesterday. I'll be very clear about all of this. Rioting is not protesting. Looting is not protesting. Setting fires is not protesting. None of this is protesting. It's lawlessness, plain and simple. And those who do it, should be prosecuted. Instead of condemning violence, President Trump is endorsing it. Here is what he said about Portland, where a right-wing protester was shot and killed this weekend. He was part of a caravan of Trump supporters driving through the downtown protests, some of those supporters shooting paintballs and, according to a witness I interviewed, marbles from paintball guns. You were just criticizing Joe Biden, saying he didn't mention the far left or Antifa. During his speech today, you said you wanted to talk about left-wing political violence. Yeah. But I noticed you did not mention that your supporters were also in Portland this weekend, firing paintball guns at people, some form of pepper spray. So do you want to also take this chance to condemn what your supporters did? Well, I understand they had large numbers of people 
that were supporters, but that was a peaceful protest. And paint is not, and paint is a defensive mechanism. Now, that death in Portland is not okay. The president, though, is greenlighting his supporters to show up at protests and shoot paintballs at protesters. He's saying that's peaceful behavior, but he's also greenlighting his supporters to show up with bullets. He is defending the 17-year-old in Kenosha, Wisconsin, who allegedly shot and killed two people with an AR-15-style gun and wounded a third. That was an interesting situation. You saw the same tape as I saw. And uh, he was trying to get away from them, I guess, it looks like. And he fell. And then they very violently attacked him. And it was something that we're looking at right now, and it's under investigation. But uh, I, I guess he was in very big trouble. He would have been, I, he probably would have been killed. But it's under, it's under investigation. According to police, that 17-year-old suspect in Kenosha allegedly shot someone, ran, and people from the crowd chased him. The president of the United States essentially is saying it's okay to take up arms without training or credentials or authority, go into the streets and act out a video game with protesters. But even if people are in the streets, breaking the law, rioting and looting, it is not the role of a private citizen to police them and to shoot them. That's not how the, how the president of the United States sees it. He, he immediately had to retreat from that, from that area because, because the, 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 the mob that was the rioters that were chasing him, uh, who had witnessed this, immediately called him out um, uh, for the shooting, uh, which, of course, wasn't self-defense, but they called him out for the shooting. That's the attorney for the suspect saying they called him out. Well, they is law enforcement, the shooter, is now facing multiple homicide charges. And in New York City, the police commissioner is warning against bringing a gun to a protest like the shooter did in Kenosha. Probably the last thing we would want to see here. And around the streets, I, I just, I feel for my law enforcement brothers and sisters across the country dealing with that. And, and, I, and I would liken it to almost, Jim, it's a, uh, a powder keg and, and throwing a match on. It's just so incredibly volatile already. Calmer heads and leaders, the president is not either here. The president is arguing that he is the law and order candidate, but he clearly supports neither. He says he is the candidate who can combat violence, but he isn't against violence. He's against black violence. He's just fine with white violence, it appears. Joining me now is CNN contributor Miles Taylor. He served as chief of staff at the Department of Homeland Security under the Trump administration. He is supporting Joe Biden in November. Miles, when you hear what the president is saying, uh, is it something that you worry could embolden people to take up arms against protesters and rioters? Or do you think that people will be smart and they won't do that? Well, thanks, Brianna. I mean, I would say this, it's beyond worry at this point. I think that the likeliest outcome is that the president's rhetoric will be hijacked by people for these reasons. And I'll go a step further. I talked to law, law enforcement officials that I used to serve with in the administration on an almost daily basis. They are very concerned behind the scenes about the president's rhetoric and its ability to fan the flames of further unrest. Uh, you had the police commissioner just say from New York that this is a powder keg. I likened it earlier today uh, to the president arranging kindling with his words that will turn into a nationwide brush fire uh, if Joe Biden wins. He's trying to set the stage uh, for more unrest uh, to show that you know he's the legitimate uh, heir to a second term as president, even if he doesn't win it. This is very concerning. This is rhetoric we've never seen out of a modern president uh, in U.S. history. So yes, law enforcement officials are concerned, and they should be, because we've already seen Donald Trump's rhetoric jump the tracks into violence in the past, and, and he's laying the groundwork for that in the near future.